awarded um, the Habitat for Humanity State Supporter of the Year Award, a combined contribution uh, from Dale Larson and Superior Homes provided Habitat South Dakota with 30 homes for partner families all across South Dakota, four of which uh, will be located right here in Watertown. Habitat for Humanity Greater Watertown Region is very pleased to announce our new Executive Director, Nick Gore. Nick comes to us from the great state of Wisconsin where he was previously responsible for benefits administrating, uh, recruiting, and account management for Beaver Dam Community Hospitals, Remedy Intelligence Staffing, and ABM Industries. Everyone, please welcome Nick Gore. So Nick, tell, tell me you're not with Green Bay Packers. I'm not. Nice. You're the man. Yeah, it's okay. We have a we have a caveat story about that. When you guys get some extra time, I can fill you in on a funny story. Okay. So. I wanted. <laughs> I wanted to make a couple comments, if I may, before you before you get on there. Uh, I was out to the uh, the West Kemp House when you had the, you know, they were still framing it up, and my wife and I bought some. I think it was some two by sixes at KXLG uh, at the time, and. The, our grandkids were painting them and doing things. We searched that entire house and we found them. It was so cool. Oh, great. Yeah, it was just a, a great way to uh, get people involved. And then I was also at your house on 15th Street when they uh, uh, kind of had the open house for those folks. It was just amazing to see the young families that get involved in that. So what you're doing, I think, is just uh, amazing for Watertown. So now, Dick, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. I'm sorry I That's all butted right. it on you there. All right. Uh, thank you, Barb. As uh, Barb mentioned, I am from Wisconsin. Uh, when I recently relocated out here at the end of November, I came from a community um, very similar to Watertown, so it was easy for me to fall in love with it. Um, a lot of similarities through that. So um, looking forward to 2017, um, we are closing in on another house uh, within about two months. We should have a family in there, uh, so that is very well, very good. Um, we were gifted a Superior Homes home, um, so we are looking for an available lot and partner family with that. Um, I was looking around the room right now, I'm seeing a lot of unfamiliar faces as I'm new to the area. Uh, so one thing that I wanted to get done this year was to get an impact in the community, as meet as many people as I can, um, civic leaders, business leaders, just to kind of get that partnership and cultivate those partnerships within the community um, to get our mission out there uh, to make our community better. Um, so what we do um, as, an, as an organization, we really want to get that mission out, um, drive our word out there to get, get word out there because um, none of our work is possible without every volunteer hour, every donation dollar, um, and word of mouth from, from everyone that we touch. So um, as, on behalf of Barb and myself, I really like want to thank everybody on the council for for having us for a few minutes tonight to to listen to our story to listen to our mission um, and to see what we're doing with, with the community i wouldn't say for the community because everybody's working together um, in this mission so um, on behalf of barbara and myself uh, thank you very much thank you nick and barb do you guys uh are you getting to the point where you're having a hard time finding properties for these I, I have noticed some of the ones that were built just a few years ago in my neighborhood that you uh, actually built twin homes. Is that getting to be more of the, when you do a stick built, getting you know, to be more of the norm? or? We, we look at a, at a combination of factors. Um, in the future, we'll probably be looking at some more twin homes. Okay. Kind of utilizes the property probably a little bit better, and especially when property is getting a little bit harder to, to find for you. So. Barb or Nick, uh, you've been around, what, 25 years, give or take, here in Watertown now. So you've got getting a pretty good track record in the community. Can I just ask, what, what kind of issues have you, ha have you had with delinquencies or, you know, as, as far as uh, families staying current on their mortgage? Anything that you can share there or any comments you might have? Well, as of we just closed in December, as of uh, January 1st, we have everybody current under our current mortgage. I believe there are... 13 or 14 current homes that we hold mortgages for. Um, all of them are current. Um, so we don't see a lot of that. Um, if there is any issues with that, they would come to us, um, say, hey, we're not 
doing the greatest this month? Could we possibly work out an arrangement to get that paid off in the next three months? Um, if they've been in good standing that everybody has been, um, we're more than willing to work with, with our partner families to, to get that solved. Right. Any other questions you have for these folks? Thanks for being here. It's Thanks exciting for having to hear us. that. Now, tell me, I, I think when Superior did the house up here on uh, 3rd Street or so, yes. they literally lifted it up with cranes, am I correct? That is And correct. set it down. It was a very exciting day. It's amazing. Yes. They, they had a, a lot of really beautiful landscaping at that lot. Uh, right. Beautiful, large pine trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were able to just pick it up and drop it right in. It tells you how, how well it was built at Superior, too. You know, it <laughs> kind of gives you that. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have evening. a good one, you guys. You too. If there's anything we can do to help, you got to let us know. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank right. you. Number three, update on the Children's Safety House Project. Uh, Chief, you can help us out on that. Well, thank you very much. Um, our current um, safety house was built in 1992 and uh, it's, uh, it's been a great asset to our community and uh, we've been looking at it for a few years and, and uh, uh, trying to look at doing some updates to it and stuff and, and uh, uh, I think we got to the point with uh, some of the updates and the expense to do that uh, uh, and, the, and the fact that it's a two-story facility that is like 14 foot six tall and uh, we run into some tree problems and things like that so I think what we'd like to do is uh, uh, just look at a new design for a for a safety house and and, uh, and we've done some fundraising and stuff so uh, just walk you through a little bit and give you guys an update um, as you can see uh, I put together some bullets uh, what is a what is a, a safety house uh, it's a it's a it's a house on wheels that we take around to the schools the third graders um, different organizations that will set it up for special events and things like this really a neat thing to teach uh, our youth about uh, uh, how to get out of a, a house when they're when there's smoke inside your house fire be it fire or hot hot smoke whatever the case may be we'll set up some different scenarios for the kids and and uh, make them uh, uh, do a fire pre-plan and and get a safe place to meet um, it's it's pretty amazing um, so we hit we make sure we hit all the school kids uh, they never they never forget that information they always retain it and um, it's a lot of peace of mind if if uh, you know that your your family is uh, um, practices drill for when something really happens to the parents and the kids so anyway um, this is what this is um, okay so so basically, uh, um, we'll we'll have the kids go inside the house. They'll lay down on the on the fake bed that we have and pretend like they're asleep, and uh, then all of a sudden we fill the the house up with smoke and the detectors go off, and they have to check the door with their hand and and open the door, look in the hall, and if they can't pass that hallway safe, then they have to close the door back up, and go out the window and go to the meeting place. Pretty neat, uh, pretty neat thing. Like I said, uh, uh, it's. Uh, uh, something that we've we've done since 1992. A um, little bit about our current safe safety house. Um, it, it was all it was all built uh, by donated funds with the uh, Watertown Home Builders and and uh, I believe a Lake Area Construction um, Group had something to do with that. Um, I was actually around at that time when when that one was built. Um, like I said, the, some of the problems that we've had with it. Uh, is just the fact that it's so tall. It's a two-story house, and uh, that's run into some problems with uh, just going up to the schools now with the trees and stuff. With 14 foot six tall, uh, we can't store it inside anywhere because uh, um, storage is so expensive with a uh, with a height that that tall. So it's it's all weather protected. So it it's not that it has to sit inside, um, but it has it has served us very well. So the new one that we would like to look at. Um, would be a one story it would have two bedrooms and a control room the control room just has all the video video equipment that uh, fills up the, uh, the the house with smoke and then and then uh, moves the, the smoke out of the house when the next group comes in the new one would be about 12 foot 8 inches tall um, so a little bit shorter uh, easier to to store 
the other nice thing about the new one it would be handicap accessible uh, we'd have ramps on this one so if we had someone in a wheelchair we could uh, use uh, utilize the rooms and and uh, three old doors and things like that so uh, pretty neat so we did some research uh, last year on, on what would it cost to to uh, to get a new safety house in Watertown. We did come up with uh, uh, a local estimate of uh, that it's going to be somewhere between thirty-two and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars for everything included. Uh, that is uh, that's just purely an estimate at this time. Uh, we did check at some of the companies that build um, safety houses across the U.S. And they are into that fifty, sixty thousand dollar range. So we really want to uh, try and do this locally, um, if we can. Uh, in twenty sixteen, we did start some fundraising uh, for a new safety house. Um, we do have uh, ninety five hundred dollars in donations uh, to go directly towards this uh, building of this new safety house. So what we'd like to do is. Uh, uh, identify um, there's a couple organizations out there that may be willing to uh, uh, donate materials or donate uh, time and, and labor and stuff like this so that's what we're looking into right now to see what exactly we would need if we can get some commitments on donated uh, materials and time to put this thing all together to probably uh, reduce this number down and figure out exactly what we need for donated funds and then we would look for once we get that identified in the next 30 days, we would look for uh, some grants uh, that are out there with different uh, organizations um, and, uh, and finalize all the plans and, and uh, continue the fundraising. So that's, that's um, kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what we'd like to do. Uh, the old uh, fire safety house, if we did, um, uh, once we built a new one, uh, there may be some surplus um, value there for another community i'm not real sure but it it didn't really make sense to rip it down to the bare frame and reuse the frame because i think it costs us more to to tear it down to that level um, i do have a basic floor plan of what what the new one may look like uh, it uh, it's it's looking like um, this will be a trailer on a on a basically a trailer house axle and uh, this would have a deck uh, on each end of the trailer and a bedroom on each end and a control room so they'll come up a ramp um, into the front door and then either they'll be either put in one of the two bedrooms and uh, one one firefighter in the control room one firefighter in each bedroom and then when they exit out the window or the door there'll be someone to meet them outside to make sure they go to their safe place here's a couple other pictures of just potentially what it may look like um, moving ahead in the future so um that's the the trailer house type and i think that's the type we'd really like uh, we did look around online and we did find a few of them that are you see this is built on a regular car trailer and uh, the way it looks anyway um and uh, there's there's that option out there too but i think we're just a little little uh get a little better trailer if we use a trailer house type system and and get it uh, done a little better i do have um the only other thing i do have is a uh, I did, you have to forgive me, I did take a picture of our current um, safety house. Uh, so that's that's if anybody wants to, uh, you can see the, the two-story and stuff, and it's, uh, um, this goes to the upstairs, and, and it was tough to get, um, get it around and stuff. It seems a little top-heavy and stuff. Like I said, it's really worked well for us in our community, but I, I think we'd be better served with a, a, uh, shorter trailer so I guess with that that's my update and I don't know if anybody has any questions do you, uh, on it. Do you think maybe you could <laughs> instead of selling that as surplus turn that into a an ice shack for brooms two-story ice shack yeah mm. he'd be <laughs> fishing <laughs> from upstairs so I like, yeah. <laughs> I like that say I did have a question for you though okay. when, when you have those kids going to that room and you maybe you had said it and I didn't catch it but when a kid's laying there in the bed it, do you have a uh, a firefighter in that room with them so somebody freaks out yes okay. yes we have a firefighter in each bedroom uh, we'll we'll make sure they're doing the right steps and proper procedures and stuff to to make sure that they're gonna take the proper steps and never never do anything they're not supposed to so. D Doug mm -hmm. maybe you said what what age kids typically uh, do you run through there 
Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, when we when we hit the uh, local schools, um, we'll do we'll we'll do it like in Watertown. We'll do all the third graders every year. Uh, when we go out of town, we don't go out of town too much with the trailer, but we do invite the surrounding uh, schools to come in, and we'll take uh, third to fifth graders. Uh, sometimes they'll come every other year and they'll combine all their classes. We just want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to go through it. We'll also set it up um, for pretty much any age at, of kid that wants to go through it on special events and things like that. So, so if my math is correct, which isn't often, but is this the house that was originally built in 1992? Um, that would be the gray one. I just no, no, the one, the one we have now. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. the one I just showed so you a picture of. That lasted us 25 years. Yeah. So that's a, a really good deal. So. Um, your cost per year, your cost per use is pretty good. So I guess I'm thinking that this is a really good idea. Um, something that, uh, are you gonna look at like LATI or some of the other partners that have helped you in the past to yes, work with you on I, this? I have a meeting with uh, Watertown Home Builders and uh, um, set one up with the, the, the LATI uh, uh, carpentry division to see if uh, they would like to donate. We do have some, um, Contra local contractors that mm -hmm. would love to donate materials and stuff. We've been contacted by them. So I think what will happen is trying to just put this thing all together and, and uh, get it get it laid out, um, get the funding in place and then the commitments and, and uh, uh, come forth, um, um, you know, to, to, let us, to let you know how we're doing with the, the estimates, the cost, and and how we're doing on on our fundraising and things like that so yeah i guess i was getting at it's a good return on our investment or your investment or whoever makes that investment and i can tell you having gone through that super super black smoke that's really makes an impression on you so i think that uh when i crawled through the training house with all that gear and <laughs> blinding black but i'm glad you're doing it because i think kids need to know what to do when there's a fire so Any other questions? Well, thanks, Douglas. Yeah. Appreciate it. Good project. Number four. <clears throat> Everybody's looking to see if it's their car horn that's out there making the noise. Yeah. It's a Ford, isn't it, Randy? I think so. Number four, discussion on proposed ordinance number 1705, amending the section 7.1604 to reflect the new officer election month for the Upper Big Sioux Watershed Board. Justin, I think you're uh, helping draw this up with, uh, with Roger, aren't you? Yes, sir, Mayor. Okay. And I'll let you take it. It's Show uh, us what you're doing. <laughs> of less length than the, uh, the title that you just read off there, really. Uh, this is just simply reflecting what the Upper Big Sioux Watershed Board decided here at its January meeting, which it's empowered to do to uh, determine a different month for the election of its officers. And since we had it in revised ordinance, uh, you know, the month that they were to select their officers just would be changing revised ordinance to reflect what they did. I'll just make a real quick comment because I, I, I sat, I sit in on those meetings and the reason this is taking place is we're having a hard, the group's having a hard time getting representation from the townships around the area to sit in at, with, or send a representative and the thought was by change and based upon the township cycle uh, versus the Upper Big Sioux cycle, it would probably lend itself better if the Upper Big Sioux could have representation or change the annual meeting to April, which is after when most of the townships reorganize. Mm -hmm. So hopefully pick up a few more rep representatives from around the area. Makes sense. That was easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you expect this to be a first reading at next meeting? Yes, sir. Next council meeting, first reading? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Number five. Discussion on the proposed ordinance number 1706, repealing section 19.1405, unlawful to carry fire, um, uh, firearms on an off-road vehicle, and section 19.1405A, unlawful to carry firearms on a golf cart, as a firearms regulation prohibited by statute. So you give us an explanation of what's going on here, and, and this is also something that will be on as a first reading on our next meeting. 
That, that's correct, Mayor, and I apologize. There's a typo in the uh, agenda here that, that should read 1914-08 and 1914-08-A. Um, so, you know, uh, to keep it brief, what this comes down to is there is a statute in state law, SDCL 9-19-20, which uh, when passed in 1983 made it clear that municipalities could not adopt an ordinance that restricts possession, transportation, sale, transfer, ownership, manufacture, or repair of firearms or ammunition or their components. And uh, these two ordinances were adopted uh, much, at, uh, much later than 1983. And so uh, by virtue of this law, they are effectively null and void. And so, uh, you know, my suggestion to the, the council would be uh, that these ordinances be removed for that reason. I think the golf cart one came because they saw how Bruce golfed and they were afraid that if he had a gun on his golf cart that it would be really dangerous. <laughs> Maybe you didn't notice how the goose population decreased yeah. at the country club. Uh -huh. There you go. Well, so, you know, just to, to add in a quick point, uh, state law, you know, does restrict uh, essentially what off-road the off-road ordinance does state statute already does and where state statute authorized imbued rather uh, the city with authority to regulate golf carts uh, based upon the fact that it extended that regulatory authority to traffic regulations it's dubious whether we even had the authority to enact that in the first place would there be a chance you can kind of give us a little bit of update on on how state and federal law how how we have to work with them oh as far as firearms because we don't have a lot that uh, we can that we have there's no real wiggle room on our side that that's correct mayor um, you know since 1983 we've obviously had that statute in place but um, you know with federal jurisdiction extending into all manners of interstate commerce gun laws uh, and gun manufacture laws gun possession laws are oftentimes regulated at that level where the state has the most authority is in licensure, which our state has exercised, you know, rather liberally to, you know, reflect the fact that this is, is uh, a, a state that has a lot of folks that, that are, you know, enthusiasts for firearms, for hunting, for, you know, it, and so we, we have a hierarchy of jurisdictions and the role played by the municipal jurisdiction is n none, essentially just about none. Uh, I think we have in ordinance uh, discharge of firearms within city limits, which is within our purview, but possession, carrying, selling, that's outside. So this only deals with gun possession? That is correct. No other use of off-road or other types of vehicles? That, that yeah, and okay. it would apply to yeah, just off-road vehicles and golf carts. As it relates to guns? That's correct. Okay. Any other questions for uh, Justin? Thanks, Justin. Very easy. Thank you. Number seven, discussion on the future use of the auditorium and adjoining parking lot. Pardon me? Yep. So if you'll put that on there for me. I, uh, we had discussion. Lee, if you want to come up to the mic, you're sure welcome to do that. I'm going to kind of preempt it just a little bit and, and tell them what's going on. The county has approached the city and... Um, they're looking at different areas that they can put a jail or, or the justice center parts of it, uh, no matter whichever way they go. They've actually asked the city if we would consider getting a uh, uh, an appraisal on the on the auditorium and on the piece of property to the north of it, which is a city parking lot. At this particular time, what we did is we did go out and we got two two proposals, uh, one for each. Okay, so and and <laughs> the county is, has kind of moved towards they would like just one of the properties if if you folks are are willing to take a look at that. And I think that's kind of where we're at tonight. Uh, the appraisal came back on the city parking lot that's on the north side of the auditorium at $462,000. Now, there are some things in there that they, they weren't able to take a look at, like as the... Uh, where the Elks was at that time, you know, a lot of that was pushed in and that would have to really be, I think when you take a look at geotech and see what's really in there, you know, for, mm -hmm. um, for a base, that would have to be looked at. But I guess um, 
Uh, Lee, if you want to share any thoughts on this, you know, this is kind of where you guys are leaning towards. I have no idea where the council is at this particular time. It's just a, a work session to let them know that it, it's kind of on the table, mm -hmm. and then we will uh, take it further once you hear more. But you are going to go for a vote in the month of June. Right. And and uh, I think it would be it would be prudent if they were – if I mean, if the, if the voters go and say, yeah, let's build this thing and let's go here – they should kind of be on board with it. So right. I thought we would just kind of see what yeah. where people stand on it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thanks for the chance to, to speak. Um, yeah, just to update everybody, that basically where we are right now, we're looking at a smaller option. You've seen the options in the paper that in the in the thirty million dollar range that would we try to cover all the needs that we projected. Right now, our focus is the jail, but and then while doing as much for uh, court space as we can. Um, so I pr uh, sorry if that's really abbreviated. And so that what that leads us to is that uh, we can get a lot done simply by using the parking lot north of the auditorium and not the auditorium building itself. Um, and to go the way we'd kind of like to have it, um, I guess, ready or locked and loaded, ready to go, um, should the voters say yes. Um, we, we still have some more refinement to do on exactly the option that we're going to propose to the voters. And so... Um, you know, as as we get to that point where we have the exact option with the exact amount and all those all those things figured out from the county commission perspective, and then the voters say yes, we'd like to have an agreement in place, kind of you know conditionally saying that we that gets enacted uh, once the voters say yes, which hopefully they will, um, at least from the county perspective. So I I will open it up for questions if you have any questions on. Uh, uh, you know, there is a it's, a, it's a major parking lot that we're using right now. Well, what, happens happens to the, good? what happens to the use of the auditorium if you don't have the parking then it's just the building? Is that what would be the case? I think there would be an agreement that would be, uh, would be made. They're going to have to have some parking over there, and I think there would have to be some type of an agreement on the sale that, that we do have parking ability on, on the uh, auditorium. And frankly, I'm not sure exactly where that property line goes is probably in there but I didn't see well, it was it's in the appraisal oh, when I yeah. went through it um, it's pretty close to the auditorium building I don't know the exact you know, how many I do have minutes. the image okay. on my computer if you want to look at that yeah why don't you do that Shane that'd be great while you're doing that <coughs> Lee is that piece of part or is that parcel adequate or are you going to need to have to secure some more buildings around that well right now that would be I can use the mouse this Shane's got a menu okay there okay yeah, no, that, well, basically it would, it would fit um, the jail, jail admin, and we're also looking at the possibility of, of putting in a small sheriff's office. Um, that would fit, in, uh, and that would include a 32-bed uh, expansion possibility. So right now that's a 120-bed jail. That's kind of the base that we're looking at, um, and that would fit there. And the other, the other thing on the second floor of that, we're looking at some kind of a courtroom, so, um, but not the... Uh, so we, we don't want to, it's not, not a two-story jail, not the jail part of it, but the office part would have a court facility there to minimize inmate movement. Um, and then the, uh, the appraisal, as I, as I read through it, includes that, that parking area on the, the north um, west there, too. So that provides a bit more room. Re initially, that would just be parking. Um, so, yes, the, the short answer is yes. But it does, it pretty much takes up all that space from from First Avenue down to the, the end of that, uh, close to, very close to the auditorium there. Would so the alley stay intact, or is that would that be a, look to be abandoned? Um, at least part of it would. I don't have it in front of me, but at least part of it would. And that, that could, uh, that's something that we have to, I, I don't have that right in front of me. Um, when, when you say would, I think his question was, would, would you hope for closing of some or keeping it open? I would hope to keep some of it open. But it, but as I if you expand um, the housing area, the jail housing area right now, at least on the footprints we've drawn up, goes on the north part of that. So, so if you extend, if you ever have to in the future expand that, that's going to cut to the west across that block. So, if I understand you right, probably at the very beginning you wouldn't look at closing any of the alley or. That's my understanding okay. right now. So we're right, right now, just so everybody knows the stage we're at, we're not at, at the blueprint stage. Yep. We're at the conceptual plan stage, yep. so still the, what the architects yep. call pre-design. I think there's some 
major utility things to be dealt with in that alley from when we looked at it at the time of the PD possibility over there. Isn't there also a portion in there that either the county owns with the city or owns separately, a little piece of that? We, yeah, we, there's the county, uh, gave up, there's uh, a, their, their share of that to, to you guys, I think, a while ago. Okay, well, I know when we asked if we could, if we did something over there, if that would yeah. be agreeable, and they said yes, but I don't know that we ever followed through past that, so. Yeah. I'm sorry, Billy, you got it. Tell, tell me again what you just, I was somewhere else. Oh, am, am I mumbling? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just too short over there. I couldn't hear really you. What's the deal? No, there was a piece of property. It, on that side where the old theater was torn down at one time that the county had some interest in and we that's been deeded back to the city at some it point has. in time then. when yep. that that happened when we we traded when we traded the property, the property for the Sunchase. other proposed or sun chase was it okay. sun chase was involved yeah okay. sun chase this pro piece of property and then also the property out west was the the had. question of the parking for the city auditorium i mean even when the auditorium is pretty busy uh, I would think there'd still be ample parking on the streets for, I mean, I think that's where most people park now, so. Right, and I think you are going to see, you know, the auditorium become less and less used as, as time goes on with the new Prairie Lakes Wellness Center, which will be open in, in March. Mayor, did you, did we get an appraisal on the, on the odd? We did. In fact, if you want to put this one up too for me. Give you an idea. This is the auditorium appraisal, which came in at the same time. <coughs> so this first one was four hundred sixty-two thousand, is what we saw on the land. And the appraisal for the auditorium came in at six hundred fifty thousand dollars, is what they're estimating the value of the auditorium at. Just a comment, um, I had occasion last summer uh, to spend several hours in the uh, current jail facility uh, shadowing the staff. I wasn't there uh, uh, because I uh, didn't want to be, but uh, shadowing the staff. And I realize that this is very preliminary and early on as far as our discussion, but boy, I sure hope for the sake of the staff, if you don't even care about the inmates, for the sake of the staff, I hope we get something worked out with the new facility here in town. The conditions that the, the staff was working over there, I mean, I, I feel for it. They're very dedicated and uh, hats off to them, uh, but it is not conducive working uh, conditions for uh, the staff, uh, the, the inmates, like I say, if, even if you don't care about them, uh, which we can't take that approach. Uh, it, it's appalling what we've got for our current facility. I'll be very honest about that. And I sure hope we can get something worked out, and uh, I'd like to see us as a city be able to cooperate somehow in making this happen. It's not to the point of someday if something happens, it's someday when something's going to happen. So, Mayor, do we know on when when the land was purchased for the uh, when the Elks burned down and then when the theater was torn down? Uh, what was the intent on the city's purchase of that land at that time? The do intent at that particular time when it was purchased was to put a city hall there. And is that would that be well, obviously be ruled out if, if this is what it is, but has there been any discussion for that site um, for City Hall purposes? You know, we've had numerous uh, discussions on that, and, you know, we've kind of sat back a little bit because we knew the county was looking at jail facilities, and it just seemed like that was really cohesive to have that down in that area. There are other locations that we own or could, or could purchase if we were to sell some of this property and... Uh, it would work out real well in the future if we were to build a city hall. Well, you know, we wear two hats on this scenario as a as representatives of the city, and we had to watch out for our concerns. But as a as a member of the the county, the community, it does seem like an appropriate place for this and an appropriate use for that in light of the its location, more so than a city hall. Um, it just seems. I would agree, absolutely. Lee, thank you very much for oh, being here. You. And uh, the, the council now understands what the values are. And, um, okay. 
every every month that goes by it just goes up like two percent so don't worry about it right? <laughs> okay. right. it's all good i'm all just right. telling you okay thanks thank lee you. thank you thank you very much <laughs> there was um, there was an item i wanted to visit about and um, it's just something that justin and i have been talking about for for a while we, we've heard discussion and i don't know if you guys have heard it out on on the street about taxi our taxi ordinances that we have and for some reason it's, it's always kind of been out there that Watertown in its ordinance only has the ability to have one taxi in Watertown. Well, that's really not correct. Uh, what the deal is, is is our current ordinance states that if somebody wants to bring in another taxi cab company, they come in front of the council and the council then decides if, the, if it's necessary in Watertown to have that. One of the things that we're talking about, Justin and I, is uh, uh, the new taxi cabs, the Ubers, the Lyfts, you know, they also have to have permission in Watertown to come if they were to do that. There are people that are currently looking at uh, uh, those, those opportunities for themselves here in town. And I think that, uh, Justin, maybe you want to enlighten us a little bit what we would have to do to our city ordinance to allow them to come in as uh, I, I know other cities have touched on that and I just thought if since you're updating ordinances this would be a good one to do yeah and I'd, I'd be happy to do that mayor um, certainly Sioux Falls has taken the lead on this because of its uh, concentration of population and with I think the earliest interest in Uber and Lyft being generated by uh, folks down there but uh, it's not lost on on this community certainly we do have taxi cab uh, taxi cab chapter in our ordinances that's chapter 1909 and in that ordinance we don't have yet defined precisely what a taxi cab is so it's possible that we could take the existing regulatory f framework for taxi cabs and then apply it to uber and lyft relatively easily uh, by simply defining taxi cabs as including Uber and Lyft services. Now, uh, it will require additional research to get down perfectly or to get it down, you know, to a level that, uh, you know, would it encompass Uber and Lyft because they're slightly different than an earlier 20th century version of a pure taxi cab. But, you know, it, it's something we can definitely do and I'd be happy to work on, make sure we, we have something in anticipation of when Uber and Lyft decide to come into the community. Justin and Mary, this this one's always puzzled me a little bit as to why why we look to control and we are controlling if it's a, if there's an approval taxis in our town. I mean, we don't control how many eating establishments there are or how many uh, clothing stores or why are we why are we controlling taxis? Why isn't it just a free market and let people decide if they want to run their business here, license them, and let them do it? I would agree. I would agree with that assessment, Mike. I know I can, I can take you back a few years, back in, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be way back, back in time. Troglodytes, I think they call it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> back in 1970, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, my parents had a taxi cab here in town called Thorson Texaco and Cab. And at the same time, there was also another cab called Grab a Cab. Once uh, my folks uh, retired and got rid of the, the cab company, for some reason, the city then at that time said, well, we don't need two taxi cabs. And that's when they started saying that you needed to come in front of the city council and, and, uh, and plead your case. It, it's kind of a, a real archaic law. I would agree with you 100% that free market will determine who mm -hmm. who should be here. That's why I think you should you should be able to have taxi cabs. You should be able to have the Ubers. You should be able to have the Lyfts or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I would agree. I think we need to change our ordinance to reflect that. Well, and so maybe if we were going to obsolete that ordinance, because that's really what we would be doing. Does that is that take a first read, second read type scenario to it to obsolete as well? Yes, it would. You know, because to me, versus op modifying it to allow more, I think we should we should challenge the need for the the ordinance in the first place. Uh, I will tell you that there's been a number of times that I have gotten emails or complaints or have been stopped by people concerned with issues or individuals with the current cab company. So there's really very little motivation 
on their part, and I don't even know who these, the company is or the people are, but there's very little motivation to improve your service if you're the only one here. And uh, so I think for those reasons, I think our, our serious consideration should be to eliminate it, not to modify it. I think I can go back to the, you, the time your folks were in there and Grab a Cab was there. Uh, I think it was basically set up at that time because I'm just about as old as you, believe it or not, uh, to try to protect, <laughs> to, to, to <laughs> at that time when there was two services, the services were both diluted enough that, that there wasn't enough business in Watertown at that time. So I think that was the intent of the ordinance back in that time. But I agree with Mike that, that we should not limit free enterprise and you're absolutely right and now with the the more concern on drinking and driving and things like that it, it, it really is um, it's needed I, I think taxi cabs would be a, a better way of doing it than, than what we're allowing right now because a lot of times right now we got people running around out there with with buses and nobody's regulating them at all at least with taxi cabs we can regulate them so and, and nothing wrong with the buses because the the bar owners are doing that for service for their for their customers, but that's very lightly regulated, uh, like unregulated. So at least with the cab companies, we could regulate them. So one one thing to well, we can uh, you know I'll I'll do some more research on this and see what maybe the implications are should the city decide not to you know regulate it altogether. Um, you know, just to see what other communities have done out there. Because there, there are certainly implications both ways, um, legally and otherwise. And so I'll make sure that I give you the fullest lay of the land, so to speak. Justin, do, do you have to buy a taxi license from the community? You do? Okay. Yeah, the drivers have to be approved by the council also. Yeah, they go through that. Mayor and, and Justin, how do, how do these bar shuttles currently how do they get controlled or or monitored or approved they don't they don't, they don't. and yet they're providing that same service and it's a good service don't get me wrong but it's just it's a, it's a courtesy to your to your patrons but it's providing the same service with no controls or I approvals. think that's exactly what you said. It's a courtesy to your patrons. I don't believe they charge That's them. right. Yeah, that's they the don't. distinction. Them a if, if it was motor for hire, then they would have to be regulated, either bus or taxi cab. But if they aren't, then they fall outside our regulatory ambit. Right. But the point is, if there's any safety concerns, we have nothing to do with that. And for every person that gets on that bus uh, that might otherwise take a cab, is taking business away from a cap. So it's contrary to what we're trying to do by having, and I'm going to say by having one cab system unless the need for two is there. So it just seems like the whole thing is antiquated, and I, I would really question it. I, yeah, the, the biggest complaint I hear from people is, of course, the, probably from the 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning type, you know, and that's I, there's no way you can build a service that's going to do a good job of 80% of your business in the two hour period in the day, so. Okay, any other questions on that? I wanted to show one more thing uh, up on the screen tonight. You guys will be looking at this. I thought we'd get a little bit of head start on it. This is out at the uh, um, uh, Endress's third industrial edition and I think Shane can, can uh, also look at that. I do have a copy of the lot. Uh, Lot 31 at the Endress Edition, you can see to the north is the Walmart store. To the west of Lot 31 is, I believe, AB, ABS, ABS store. They uh, are a parts store. Off to the right, there is a, uh, a kind of a manufacturing, I believe. I, I forget the name of the welding or, or what kind of a, it's, what's that? It's industrial, yes, exactly. Well, this is going to be coming in front of you tonight, and I just wanted you to know that uh, when it does, it's going to be a great little facility, and they, they are offering the uh, exact price that every other lot has been asked to, uh, to pay out there. They also will pay for the uh, 50 cent per square foot that the, uh, the city imposed on those lots when they put in the infrastructure, and it's a recouping of that. 
So I just want to show you where this is at when we get to the get to that point on number 14. Any idea, any questions on that? It's pretty easy. Okay. Any other thing you guys need to talk about quick? Hearing none, I will uh, I will adjourn this meeting and we'll be back at seven o'clock for the city council meeting. Thank you.